Right, hello everyone. So I'm Laura and I'm a research fellow from the University of Birmingham. And I'm going to just talk about a diagnostic test that we're trying to develop at the university to try and diagnose inflammatory uveitis conditions. So the problems with diagnosing an autoinflammatory disease is that there's a lot of overlap between the diseases on the autoinflammatory spectrum. And this is because quite a lot of the cells that are involved are present in all of these diseases. And therefore, currently, the diagnosis is often reliant on clinical manifestations. So if you look at birdshot uveitis, for example, you, there are different cell types involved, but predominantly the Th17s and cytotoxic T cells have been identified as um, driving disease. And if you look at another inflammatory condition known as Bechet's disease, you can also see that although there's many different cell types involved, the Th17s and the cytotoxic T cells are also prevalent in this disease. So if you're going to distinguish between these diseases at the immune cell level, it would be very difficult. So what I do, if I want to look at these immune cells, um, I will collect blood from patients. I will then separate out the white blood cells. And then I identify different cell groups within the uh, white blood cell population. And um, I do this using a process called flow cytometry. So what this does is you get cells and you have proteins expressed on their cell surface. And you can differentiate between different cell groups based on these proteins. And we can label these proteins using monoclonal antibodies. So these antibodies are specific for a protein. They are conjugated to a color, so a fluorochrome. And when they bind to the cell surface, they will then give that cell a color profile. And we can map that color profile to the proteins that we know that they're targeting. And this tells us things about the activation state of the cells and what sort of cell they are. So if you're going to do flow cytometry, this is the typical flow cytometry plot that you would get. It's represented as a two-dimensional plot. So you're looking at two parameters at any one time. Each dot within this plot is representative of a single cell, and single cells will always cluster together with similar characteristics. And we can gate on these populations, so you can see in red um, the gated population. And we can then separate out this again, again by two parameters, looking at different colors, so red and green. And we can gaze on those populations again, and this tells us a little bit more about those cells within those populations. The problem with this method of analysis is that if you've got a large amount of cell heterogeneity, um, it can be difficult for this analysis to separate out those um, differences. And so if you've got a complex disease, such as Bechet's or birdshot or sarcoidosis, that needs to look at a multiple number of parameters at any one time, this two-dimensional gating strategy is quite difficult to distinguish them. So we, we have our collaborators over in the NIH in the US, and they've come up with a supercell analysis. So what um, Julian came up with is a way to transform single cell flow cytometry data, like I showed you previously, into a multi-dimensional tool to differentiate the disease types. And he demonstrated that you could use this supercell analysis to quantify distinctions between ocular bechets and another inflammatory disorder called sarcoidosis. And so if, what supercell analysis does, it takes the data that I showed you previously, and you can gaze on a population, and it will randomly allocate 500 of those single cells into one supercell. And we do this up to 100 times, so we end up with 100 different supercells. And what this does to the data is it beats this cell heterogeneity because it, by using population averages. So you can see on the left here, you've got pointer. Um, on the left, you've got the normal analysis, and there's a disease group which is in red, and you've got a healthy group which are in blue, and you can see there's a large amount of overlap between those two populations. And when you apply the supercell analysis, you get distinction between those two populations, because we're, and we're effectively renormalizing that data. So we're using mathematics, and I don't have a mathematician at hand to explain the central limit theorem, but it means that these distributions become more um, Gaussian-like, but if you look at the data, the means remain the same. So we're not changing the data, we're just gaining resolution so we can distinguish different um, disease groups. So unfortunately, I don't have any um, supercell data to show you, but I just wanted to show you how promising these tools are when you're looking at multiple parameters at any one time. So this is um, some data from some birdshot patients and some Bechet uh, patients, and you can see that just by using multi-parameter uh, analysis, you can get distinctions between the groups that you wouldn't usually see. So hopefully I've explained that to you, but I'd just like to acknowledge everyone at, in Birmingham as well as the patients, because without the patients who are so keen to help us with our research, we won't be able to progress any of these diagnostic tests. So thank you for listening, and I hope that was clear. Okay.